Yeah, you will have three minutes for Wednesday's speed quiz. So look what's happening this week. Speed quiz on the identity sheet. So everything, is, anything on that sheet is fair game. And then we have a regular quiz on Wednesday and a test on Friday. So there's only four, four sheets in this pattern. So I told you what the speed quiz is going to be like. Actually, today is the last lecture. There's only two lectures. So the speed quiz looks like this. Yeah, you have sine x plus y. And I'll even write the equal sign for you. Uh, cosine 2x equal uh, tangent x over 2 equal any identity on that sheet is fair game. The odd even identities, the co-function identities, Pythagorean identities, so like this. So we're going to have 20 of these and just fill in. So this one is just pure memorization, right? So this one, if you want to use flashcards, that's, that's probably good. But I don't know, if you do your homework, I don't think you need to because you got to use it on every homework problem, right? Okay. So we have questions. Is that it? You guys are good. 4C. Okay, cotangent x is 3 fourths. So are you guys drawing the reference triangle like your teacher taught you, or are you doing it the way I showed you? 3, 4, 5. And if you're between pi and 3 pi over 2, you are in the third quadrant. Secant of angle y is 13 fifths, so that's a 12. 5, 13 triangle, and if you're between negative pi over 2 and 0, you are in the fourth quadrant. So you have to keep track of the quadrant, whether you draw it in the proper quadrant or you, you do it the way I do it. So C, well, if you can do A and B, isn't C like the same thing except different? Tangent Y minus X. What's the identity? Can I just distribute the tangent like this? Yes. No, over 1 plus tangent Y tangent x. So you use the identity, and then you just look at your triangles and plug in the numbers. So what is tangent of angle y? Tangent of angle y is opposite over adjacent, but in the fourth quadrant, negative. So negative 12 fifths. Minus tangent of angle x is opposite over adjacent. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive. So 4 thirds, all over 1 plus negative 12 fifths times positive 4 thirds. Now on the test or quiz, once you write this down, you get all the points except for one. And then the last point is, can you compute that number? So like in this problem, what I would do if I were me, I would multiply top and bottom by 15. So you get negative 36 minus 20, all over 15 minus 48, so that's negative 56 over negative 33, which is equal to 56 over 33. So that's only one point. So putting all the values in, I don't know, what is this, 5 out of 6? But then every time you miss a sign because of the quadrant, that's minus 2, you know. And then if you, you apply the identity wrong, I don't know what that would be. Do I even give you, like, what if you mix, what if you put the plus there and the minus there? What would I do? Minus 4 or minus 5? Minus what? <laughs> minus half? <laughs> uh, it's not April 1st, is it? No. No, it would be minus 4 probably. And then if you just do something really terrible, like distribute the tangent, then that's minus 6. You have to, that's what this test is all about, is using identities. Okay, and then 5, 6, and 7. Do what? Okay, sine 3x. That's why if you don't know your identities, it's pretty much all over with the crime. So that's why you got to go, hey, use somebody. No. This is the identity for... 
sine of gorilla plus banana. Oh, I gotta pass back. Did we take a quiz? Please? No, that was not the class. Never mind. Okay, so isn't this just sine 5x equal 1? And then we know how to do this, right, from the last test, right? Because this is a number you, you're supposed to know for sine, right? Sine of what angle is equal to 1? Boom! Pi over 2. But since the variable is 5x, you got to go 5 times around. So you add 2 pi to this, which is what? 5 pi over 2. Then you add another 2 pi, 9 pi over 2, 13 pi over 2, and then 17 pi over 2. And then divide everything by 5, and you get 5 answers. Okay, and then B. Cosine, cosine, hey, you somebody. Okay, so you look at this and go, you somebody, yeah? That's the identity for cosine of gorilla minus banana. Okay, so, and this is a number you're supposed to know for cosine. So cosine of what angle is equal to one half? Pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. And then all you have to do is add pi over 6, right? To solve for x. Okay. That's going to become important. On, I don't know if I'm going to, am I teaching you that today? Nah, probably tomorrow. Just let it sink in. Number 6. Of course, the math team people just look at this and go, 1. Right? Now, we know the identity for tangent of something plus something, but this is something plus something plus something. So what do I do? Make it into something plus something. Don't just distribute the tangent. Now I can distribute the tangent. <laughs> no, you can't distribute the tangent. So if you only know tangent of gorilla plus banana, then turn it into gorilla plus banana. How do you do that? By making parentheses. So you want to put the parentheses around the x plus y, or you want to put it around the y plus z, it doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter. It's going to come out the same, just like eating oatmeal or what. Pick one, man, period three. What's wrong? That's it. Period three. Strike one. What? Y plus z. Yeah, I did that right. OK, so tangent of gorilla plus So tangent of the first plus tangent of the second all over 1 minus tangent of the first tangent of the second. And you think you're still going to be having proofs and things like that in this chapter? Oh, yeah. But, then, but now the proofs are going to be really juicy and tasty because now you've got all these double and half angle identities and things that get out there. Woo! Okay, now what? Well, now you got tangent gorilla plus banana. We know how to do that, right? So tangent of the first plus tangent of the second all over 1 minus tangent of the first tangent of the second. 1 minus tangent x. And again, same thing over here. Apply the identity. Tangent of the first plus tangent of the second all over 1 minus tangent of the and then it's just algebra. That's all you got to do. You apply the identity, and then now you do algebra. So how do you simplify this? Multiply top and bottom by the least common denominator, which is this. Multiply top and bottom by that. And what do you get? OK, I'll just do it with this. I'm going to just pretend I'm in an empty room. So 10x minus 10x, 10y, 10z plus 10y plus 10z all over 1 minus 10y 10z minus 10x 10y minus 10x 10z. And that's it. That's the identity. Well, so what we, right, what we did in this problem, we actually derived the identity for tangent gorilla plus banana plus armadillo. And kind of, you can kind of see how it looks, right? You, so you got tangent gorilla, 
plus tangent banana minus tangent armadillo minus the product of the three. And then in the denominator, you got one minus the product taking two at a time, yeah? I wouldn't recommend you memorizing that. And then now all you have to do is plug in the numbers. Like I gave you some numbers, right? So this is two. And then what do we have? Two times five times eight plus five plus eight all over one minus five times eight minus two times five minus two times eight. And I bet it comes out to one. Okay, I'll do it. 15 minus 80 all over 1 minus, what is that, 40 minus 10 minus 16. 66. So we got negative 65 over negative 65. The negatives cancel, the 6 cancels, the 5 cancels, you get 1. Actually, at this step here, you could have plugged in the numbers if you wanted to, right? Just plug in the numbers here and compute. But I wanted to go here because I wanted to show you the beauty of the, the identity for tangent gorilla plus banana plus armadillo. It doesn't look beautiful to me, Mr. Park. Well, that's your opinion. Okay, now number seven. Okay, I think you'll be seeing this on the quiz or test. Now, anytime you want to measure an angle in the Cartesian plane between two lines, this is the formula you use. This is a super important formula. So let's say you have two lines intersecting in the Cartesian plane. How do you compute this angle right here? What did I call it? Theta? Okay, theta. And we're measuring it counterclockwise because that's the positive direction, right? Well, what does it say? M1 is the slope of the initial side of the angle. M2 is the slope of the terminal side of the angle. Initial is where you start, terminal is where you finish. And then all you got to do is plug and chug into the formula. So tangent theta is equal to M2 minus M1 all over 1 plus M2 M1. Now look at that formula. Doesn't that formula look like a you somebody, yeah? That looks like something that we just learned. Doesn't that look like the tangent identity? Doesn't that look like the, the, form, the identity for tangent gorilla minus banana? You know why that is? What did we learn last chapter? Let's go back to last chapter. <clears throat> what is the inclination of a line again? The inclination of a line is the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. Right? So let's say that inclination of a line is alpha. How do you find the slope of this line? You guys remember? It's the tangent. The tangent of the angle of inclination is the slope. We learned that last chapter. So to derive this formula, all you have to do, here's the point of intersection. Here's make a vertical line through it. Wouldn't the angle of inclination of this first line be this angle right there? The angle of inclination of the second line is this angle here. So why don't we call this alpha and we call this beta? So is it theta equal to alpha minus beta? Wait, let me look. Yeah. And then what do you think I'm going to do to both sides of the equation? Square both sides? Log both sides. Tangent both sides. Yes, you tangent both sides. So if you tangent both sides, hey, there's an identity for this. Tangent theta is equal to tangent alpha minus tangent beta all over 1 plus tangent alpha tangent beta. I'm only going to derive it in this class because it's going to be a video. And so what do you get? What is this equal to? Look at the picture. What is tangent of this angle? It's the slope of this line. So it's m2 minus m1 all over 1 plus m2 m1. Boom! That's how you get that formula. I just derived it for you. I was hoping you would recognize that and go, hey, you somebody, yeah? Mr. Park, I'm only looking at the homework for the first time right now. 
feeling guilty? Okay, so I mean, am I doing A or B? Well, A and B are the same thing except B, you just use your calculator. Okay, A then. Why don't I do both then? Okay, so one third. So which one is okay? So if you have one line that has a slope of one third, it looks something like that, and a line that has a slope of two looks something like that, right? So this is one third, this one has a slope of two. Now remember, when you're finding this angle, you have to measure it counterclockwise now. If you don't measure it counterclockwise, you're going to get a different angle. You can get this one over here. You cannot just subtract any order you want now. So we're finding this angle. M1 is the initial side of the, of the angle. M2 is the terminal side. And then you just plug it into this formula. It's quite easy, you know. So tangent theta is equal to M2 minus M1 all over 1 plus M2 M1. It is that simple as long as you subtract it in the correct order. So multiply top and bottom by 3, you get 6 minus 1 over 3 plus 2. Hey, that's 5 over 5, which is fun. So tangent of what angle is what? 45 degrees, so that's a 45 degree angle. See, you don't need calculated because it came up to 1. Okay, but in problem B, what the heck, why don't I just do it? 1 e to the negative 1 is about 0.367, yeah? So the slope was something like that. And then pi is 3.14, it's like that. So e to the negative 1, pi. So if I want to find this angle over here, again, the initial side, you measure the angle counterclockwise. The initial side is m1, the terminal side is m2. Plug it into that formula. OK, so tangent theta is equal to m2 minus m1, shall I write 1 over e, or e to the negative, doesn't matter, all over 1 plus m2 times m1. OK, now, this, this number here, is that a number I'm supposed to know for tangent? No, it's not. It's not like 1 or root 3 or 1 over root 3. So how do I figure out this angle? You guys remember how to do it on your calculator? Yeah, you punch in. So, oh, no! So on your calculator, what do you punch in to get theta? How do you get rid of this tan? You tan inverse. Now, you've got to be careful on how to use it. Now, if this is a positive number, then you tan inverse. You're probably not going to get hurt. But we're not going to learn tan inverse until next chapter. But you guys learned it last year, right? So what you do is you punch this in on your calculator. Of course, it's going to give you a radian measurement because your calculator is in radian mode, right? So basically, this is going to give you the angle whose tangent is this. Tan inverse finds the angle. And then, of course, if, you, if you're in radian mode, if, if your calculator gives you a radian angle measurement, how do you convert it to degrees? Or do you just put your calculator in degree mode? What do you guys do? What did you guys do last year? I'm telling you right now, your calculator should be in radian mode. Don't, don't change it. But I, I know what you guys do for physics because you guys are lazy, right? Just the kind. If you have to, when you do physics, if you have to compute the sign of 37 degrees, just put the degree sign there. And that overrides the radian mode. There's a degree sign angle in the angle menu. And likewise, if you're in degree mode, if you want to override that, then you put the radian there. It's like an R of radian. Anyway, how do you, if you get radians, this is going to be important in a couple chapters now. How do you convert from radians to degrees? Let's do dimensional analysis. If I have radians, whatever it is, how do I convert that to degrees? You have to multiply by degrees over radians, so the radians cancel out. Okay, I'll put x there. Then. And what do we know? 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So you multiply by 180 over pi, and that will convert it to degrees. Because so what did I write on the bottom? I got degrees. Okay, now, again, look at this formula. This, this is not like another formula you have to memorize because that's just tangent gorilla minus banana, right? Okay, so today we're going to learn double and half angle identities. Now the fun begins.
No, I, well, I, what time is it? I can, maybe I can derive some of these. You guys derived all of these last year, right? Like cosine of 2x, the, the double angle, or 2 theta, I don't know, it doesn't matter what variable you use. How did, if you were to derive it, what would you do? What did your teacher teach you last year? You changed the 2x into x plus x. Isn't 1x plus 1x equal to 2x? And then why do you do that? Because this is cosine of gorilla plus banana. You know that identity. It's cosine gorilla, cosine banana, plus or minus? Minus, minus sine gorilla, sine banana. And then cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Sine times sine is sine squared. And there you go. That's your first identity. But if you look on your identity sheet, there's three identities for cosine 2x. Where did the other two come from? Well, one of them would be to change the sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. And that comes out to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So if you ever forget, you can always derive it. How do I get the other one? Then change the cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. And then you get the third one, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So you got three. Un, deux, trois. That's why on the, on the speed quiz, you're going to see this. Cosine 2x equal, equal, equal. Can I just write the same one for all three? Yeah, you can do anything you want. You can get two of them wrong, though. OK, what about sine 2x? Well, again, that's sine of x plus x. What did I just say? I'm not going to derive them all. So sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus or minus? Plus. Plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Eh, hey, they're the same thing. Armadillo plus armadillo is two armadillo. And there you go. That's the identity for sine 2x. And tangent 2x, you can do the same thing. Just make it x plus x, expand. But come on. We just know. 2 tan x over 1 minus tangent squared x. These need to be committed to memory until you finish your math career in college. All of these identities are going to come up. OK, now what about the half angle identities? I don't know why. For some reason, students don't like half angle. For some, I'm going to derive one of them. OK, cosine of x over 2. See, half angle. OK, well, to derive the half angle identity, you're going to use double angle identity. So let's establish this first. Would you agree cosine 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1? Yeah, that's this one right here, right? Okay, okay now let's lomi lomi. Let's massage this. Add 1 to both sides. Okay, I'll do it. 1 plus cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x. Divide by 2. 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2 is equal to cosine. I'm not going to test you on deriving these. I'm just showing this to you because. And then square root both sides. So if I square root both sides, cosine x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. But do you notice that whatever this angle is here, this angle there is double that? So if this is gorilla, this is 2 gorilla. So if you go back here, cosine of gorilla, what is that equal to? Plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, if this is gorilla, what is 2 gorilla? x all over 2. See, this angle is simply double that angle. And that's how you derive the half angle identity for cosine. And then sine x over 2. If you do the same thing, except you use this identity, you're going to get plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine x over 2. And tangent x over 2 is plus or minus. Well, tangent is just simply sine divided by cosine, right? What's this divided by that? Plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine. Yeah, we'll miss the part. On my sheet, I get 3. Yeah, 1 minus cosine x over sine x. 
but then you also have sine x over 1 plus cosine x. And we already sh I already showed you why these are equal, right? Remember, multiply by conjugate? Remember on the first time we did proofs? And same thing here, if you want to show this is equal to these, just multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Yo, yeah, Mr. Burke, don't this one got plus or minus, but these don't. Well, they don't, because you don't need them. Okay, let's look at some problems. So, I'm not going to test you on how to derive these. You've got to be able to use these back and forth. Okay, so what kind of problems you can see today? Okay, compute. Compute. Cosine 5 pi over 8. Now, is 5 pi over 8 an angle I'm supposed to know? Well, what, what the heck is pi over 8? Pi over 8 is what, 22 and a half degrees? It's half of pi over 4, that's why, right? That's not an angle I know. So what do I do? Can I write that as a sum or difference of two angles I know? No. You only can do that when it's like pi over 12. Okay, when it's pi over 8, you pretty much have to, you got to use a half angle identity, right? So is this like half of an angle that I know? Well, you guys are good. Everybody looked at somebody else. That's the way it's done. <laughs> so, yes, it's half of pi over pi, pi over 4, right? Yes. Okay, so what's the identity for cosine of x over 2? Plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine x all over 2. Okay, now first. How, Mr. Perk, how, I never understood this plus or minus last year. Well, you have to figure out which one it is. The answer is not going to have plus or minus in it, though. Because when you take the cosine of an angle, it's something. It's not going to be two different answers, right? It's got to be one of them, so which, which one do I pick? Well, you have to look at the quadrant of that angle. Where is 5 pi over 8? Where is 5 pi over 8? If you had to put the line on the unit circle, where would it be? Yeah, somewhere over there, right? It's in the second quadrant. Because this is pi over 2 right there, which is 4 pi over 8. And 5 pi over 8 is a little bigger than that, so it's second quadrant. And in the cos of second quadrant, cosine is negative. So you've got to pick the negative one. If you don't, that's a, all the signs are two points, you know. They're going to all add up on the test. Drawing the reference triangle with this half angle identity and stuff. Square root of 1 plus, oh, now, what is cosine 5 pi over 4? That's a number we're supposed to know. Negative root 2 over 2 or 1 over root 2? Which one do you think is better to use in this one? Root 2 over 2. Can I leave my answer like that? Yeah, but you, it's not simplified, so you're going to have to take out points. Minus 2, because this one you got to do quite a bit of simplifying. So what do I do? Inside the radical, multiply top and bottom by 2. So what do you get? You get negative. Root, distribute the 2 across here, what do you get? 2 minus root 2 all over 2, because, come on, square root of 4 is 2. The 4 comes out of the radical is a 2. So there's a plethora of 2s. And there you go. You guys, you guys, I mean, you did these problems last year, right? Okay, let's do another one. Students typically, they don't like half angle, I don't know why. Compute, tangent, I don't know, 3 pi over 8? Okay, 3 pi over 8, what do you think I'm going to use? Somewhere difference or half angle? Yeah, anytime it's pi over 8, you cannot write that as a somewhere difference of two angles, you know, you cannot. Okay? So you got to use half angle, so tangent of 3 pi over 8 is half of what angle? 3 pi over 4, hey, you somebody, you somebody. Okay, now, tangent x over 2. There's three identities. Which one is the bestest one to use? Okay, look at your notes. Got three identities for tangent x over 2. The one with the plus or minus. One minus cosine over sine, or uh, sine over 1 plus cosine. Which one, which one is the bestest? A, B, or C? Is that the order I put it on? Let me look. Yeah, A, B, or C? Who says A? Okay, good, that's the worst one. You know why that's the worst one? Because it got the plus or minus. You gotta figure that out where the other two don't have plus or minus. So it's either B or C. 
B or C, 50-50 chance. Come on, make a commitment, Zayn. Quick though. Okay, the correct answer is B. Why? 1 minus cosine x over sine x. Why is this better than going sine x over 1 plus cosine x? Because it's easier to simplify when you have one term in the denominator. Because if you have a radical, which we are going to get, right? Because sine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so you're going to get a radical. Isn't it easier to multiply just top and bottom by radical, whereas over here, you're going to have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate? Because there's two terms, that's why, in the denominator. You know what I'm talking about? No, I just memorized B is the part. Yeah, but you got to know law. But it's just this problem, you want to use B to simplify. Woo! Why am I, okay, what is cosine 3 pi over 4? There's a number we're supposed to know. Negative 1 over root 2, or should I put root 2 over 2? Which one's better in this problem? Come on, let's have some foresight here. 1 over root 2. Or root 2 over 2? 1 over root 2. What's foresight? Sine of 3 pi over 4. 1 over root 2. Now you're going to see why it's better to use 1 over root 2. Because now, how do I simplify this? Multiply top and bottom by root 2. And you get root 2 plus 1 over 1. So that's the answer. Matthew people, we memorize all the pi over 8s for sine and cosine and tangent. Just to let you know. Okay, so those are the basic problems. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. Okay, now, tonight's homework. Yes, you can do the problems the old way by using sum and difference identities, but no, you, you got, nah! You gotta use, like, tonight's homework is designed so that you can find identities, like use somebody. Okay, for example, what is this? Sine pi over eight times cosine pi over eight. Compute this number. Well, if you want to, you can use a half angle on this, use a half angle on that, and multiply them together, right? That's not that hard. Okay, but there's a faster way, like, hey, use somebody, yeah? Yeah. True or false, this is an identity. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. Wait, let me look at the sheet. That's an identity. That's a double angle for sine. So look at this. Sine x cosine. Isn't that this there? Use somebody. Yeah, but Mr. Park, don't have the two. Well, then just, well, just move the two on this side. It's called Lomi Lomi, people. So this is, so sine x times cosine x is equal to one half sine of two x. And then when you multiply two times pi over eight, you get pi over four eight. That's the number I'm supposed to know. What is sine of pi over four? Root two over two? So the answer is root 2 over 4, and you finish. You look for identities. you got to be able to low me, low me. Okay, what about this? Tangent pi over 8 over 1 minus tangent squared pi over 8. That kind of looks like an identity. Tangent 2x is equal to 2 tan x all over 1 minus tangent squared x. Hey, it kind of looks like that. But Mr. Park, the 2 is missing. Then move the 2 on the side. Blow me, massage it. So tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared x is 1 half tangent of 2x. But what happens when you multiply 2 times pi over 8? You get pi over 4 in the... Okay, that's a number I know. Tangent pi over 4. It runs with one. It's one. So that's just one half. Or if you want to, 
You can compute tangent pi over 8 using a half angle identity and just plug it in here and it'll all come out to one half. But why? And then you have to be able to solve equations. Okay, so here. Solve what time is it? Solve for x, where x is between 0 and 2 pi. Yes, you're going to be solving a lot of equations with this stuff. Okay, let's start off easy. Sine 2x is equal to, I don't want to do the same as tonight's homework. So it's cosine, so I'm going to do sine. But, so it's going to be on the board tomorrow, yeah. Just change one thing, all hell breaks loose. So what do I do? Divide both sides by sin x. So you get 2 equal 1, no solution. You can't do that. You got to use identity. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x equals sine x. Now what? Divide both sides by sine x and lose three solutions right off the bat. Don't you dare. You make one side zero. Never divide both sides of an equation by a variable because you lose solutions. You factor out the sine x and you get 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. What? Setting each factor equal to 0, sine x equals 0, or cosine x equals 1 half. And these are all numbers we know, right? For sine and cosine. Okay, let's do cosine 2x. Cosine 2x equals... Okay, I have sine x, so let's do cosine x. Okay, use an identity for that. Yeah, well, Mr. Park, we've got three. Which one do I take? Well, use the one that's going to help you. Cosine 2x, which one should I use? Cosine squared minus sine squared? Two cosine squared minus one, or one minus two sine squared. Two cosine squared minus one, why? Yeah, because this side is cosine. You want to make everything all one variable if you can, right? And so this is quadratic, so you make one side zero, like you always do. And it factors. It has to factor. Next chapter, not going to be factor. Then you got to know stuff. But right now, it's all factorable minus plus. So cosine x equals either negative half or 1, and then you can take it from there, right? Because these are all numbers you know. And then tonight, you're all, I, think, I believe you're deriving triple and, and even fourfold angle identities. So I'm going to start you off. Of course, mathy pe people, we memorize triple and fourfold angle identities, you know. So, like, what is tonight? I don't even know. Cosine 3x? I'm pretty sure you did this last year. Derive an identity for cosine 3x. What do you do? Because you guys are going to make me do it tomorrow anyway, right? Where is it? Okay. It's sine 3x tonight. Should, should you just do sine 3x then? Even if I start you on it, it's still going to be on the board tomorrow. What do you do? You split up 3x into? Okay, what should I do? Should I go 2x plus x, 4x minus x? Or how about 5x minus 2x? Or how about x over 2 plus 3x over 2? Why do you want to go 2x plus x? Because you know double and you know single angle identity. If you go 4x minus x, does anybody know 4 pole angle? That's what I thought. You've got to break it down into things you know. And then what is that? Sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. And then A, you somebody. A, you somebody, and then you just take it from there, right? Okay, I'll just tell you then. Sine 2x, there's only one identity for that. 2 sine x cosine x times cosine x is what makes it cosine squared. Now what? Cosine 2x, Mr. Park, got three identities. Which one do I pick? The one with sine. Why? Why do I pick that one? Because if you read the homework problem, it says write your answer in terms of sine x. So you pick the one with signs. And then what, else, what do I do with this, Mr. Buck? If that's really your name. 1 minus sine squared x. Pythagorean identity. Multiply it out. That's your answer. What the heck? We got one minute. Why don't I just finish this problem? 
Okay, so distribute this. 2 sine x minus 2 sine q plus sine minus 2 sine q. I don't know why I'm doing it for you. So this is equal to 3 sine x minus 4 sine q. Yeah, there you go. This is the triple angle identity for sine. Not many people commit this to memory. Okay, the bell's going to ring in a minute. Okay, so actually there is one more lecture, but yeah. Yeah, there's one more.